Who did I miss? Yeah. Jamie. Jamie, are you here? I didn't think I saw her. Okay, Jamie Holda. She's our Saturday night coordinator. All right, then the other people filling out the rest of our children's ministry leadership team is our volunteers. And Anne, where are you? Oh, Anne uh, Ramsey. There she is, Anne Ramsey, who is, I believe, probably the longest member, longest time-wise, um, on the team. Been there since I started the team. And she used to be a coordinator for the four, Fours, Fives, and Ks, and when she gave that up, I wouldn't let her go. So I made her a member at large and um, really value everything Anne brings to the team. Then we have our Welcome Center coordinators, um, Mary Funkhauser. Mary, are you here? There she is. She does upstairs at West, and then downstairs, Angie. I don't know if Angie was able to come tonight. Angie Bateman. Um, Let's see, is Joyce here? Joyce Bird? Okay, she does our resource rooms that keeps them well stocked at both campuses. Um, don't tell me, don't tell me. Um, ah, thank you. Our masterpiece coordinators, Michelle Demaray in the back, and Andrea Custer, she is not here. Is that everybody? Did I get everybody? Did I miss anybody? Who? Alicia. 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 I don't think Alicia's here either. She's in charge of our um, special events, the big one being um, the Easter extravaganza. So she does that. We meet as a team um, monthly um, just to plan everything and keep in communication. And it's a wonderful, wonderful team. So that's our team. Um, a little bit of business. If you have not completed registration forms for your family, Please make sure you do so you are not standing in line on Sunday when you're supposed to be in the classroom. Please, please, please get that done. Um, there are some people who still have not completed their screening, and we, at some point, may, will maybe have a list up there. Oh, you think it's coming? Oh, there it is. Okay, so there are the adults who we need some kind of screening from. And Jill is in at that kiosk in the back, and she's got all the different forms you need. So if you see your name up here, um, you can um, go see her. Um, then if I would, I would like to ask all of you to pray for our staffing needs. We are about 70% um, staffed, 72% staffed overall. We have some major holes in places so that we cannot open as of right now. If you would just pray or spread the word, um, we need a lot of preschool teachers and helpers. That seems to be one of our biggest needs as well as um, Saturday night and here at the East Campus. So there's lots of different things to do. So if you would pray for that, that God would bring those people forward and we could have a, a full staff ready to go on September 6th and 7th, which is a week from this weekend. Oh my goodness. We walked around both buildings and I, I, I don't know how it's going to be ready, but they say it is. So I'll believe, I'll believe them, I guess. Can we go back, Kathy, to the mission and the values? We've changed this a little bit this year. Um, here's the FBCG mission in case you... Um, have not heard that recently. Our mission at First Baptist Church of Geneva is to honor God by making more disciples for Jesus Christ. We will seek to accomplish this mission by, you'll see the four words, reaching the people and families of our local community, connecting them to each other and to the church, and equipping them through a process of, thank you, international? I think that word, like, intentional, that's what that word's supposed to be, spiritual growth to serve the world in the name of Christ. So that's the church's mission. Our mission um, for children's ministry is, how many? There it is. Love children to Jesus. We use that short little phrase a lot because it's just easy to say and easy to remember. By helping kids, and this next phrasing comes from our true curriculum. We wanted to be just real up to date with our stuff. By helping kids and their fa families connect with God, find their place in his big story, and respond to him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our values, um, these are our five values that we have come up. We believe in the supreme authority of scripture. Our value is development of relationships between 
children and other children, children and adults, and adults with adults. Um, safety of our children is a, is a huge thing, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Having a child-friendly environment and then a standard of excellence in all that we do. So that's our, um, our values. Okay, I can't see my sheet now. Can we, can we turn on these, um, these lights? The, the hanging down ones. I don't know what they're called. The hanging down ones. Okay, that's good. Can you still see the screen all right? Oh yeah, that's good. Is, can you see it all right? It's good? All right, good. All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, prizes. You know what, ladies, we've been talking about what should we give prizes for tonight. Next year, I think we should give prizes for anybody sitting in the front row. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Okay, so I have some gift cards here, and I'm going to spread them out on this, this little stage. And you can come up and select your gift cards to, their, to lots of different things. And we decided we were going to have um, the first two people who RSVP'd to coming to this training to be able to have one. And those two people are Sandy Plinsky and Barb Digestes. So ladies, come up and get your gift card. Gift card. Come on, Sandy. There's um, DQ and Baskin Robbins and Steak and Shake and Subway and Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's and a Barnes and Noble. So take your bad. I would have guessed that for you. Yeah. Okay. Then um, our first two arrivals. I, I, did somebody keep track of? <gasps> Katie's not here. Do you have um, Becky? Where's Becky? <laughs> Wasn't my husband here before any of them? Yeah, Danny. <laughs> Danny Saris. No. Yeah. You're not going to get one? I don't think you should be eliminated no. because you're married to me. He's deferring. I mean, He's deferring. you put up with a whole lot of stuff. Right, Danny, you don't want one? Deferring. No. Who's the next one? Christy Jennings. Christy, are you here? There she is. Come get one. And then we, um, if, we, if it's your very first time serving, by the way, if it is your first time serving, would you stand up? You've never served in children's ministries here before. Wow. Okay, good. good. Um, these are the people who put their names in here, so I'll draw one out and two, I'm going to drop two. And you can um, come get your prize. Scott McLeod. Serving in, where are you serving? The fours. Yes, with Nicole. All right, I can see these names, so I need to just do it blindly. And Peg Bendowski. Peg? Where are you, Peg? There you are. Awesome, and Peg has agreed to be a substitute in preschool and elementary. I met you at the kiosk. Yeah, so go help yourself to a card. Um, and she is a school teacher. Or are you retired? I'm retired. She's retired. But once you're a teacher, you're always a teacher. At least that's what I find out. Okay, I, I can't sit up there. I'm sorry. I gotta be down here. Um, you all can see me, right? I want to talk about um, safety because I I want to explain about our security. We went to a. Um, was that two days or two weeks? It felt like two weeks <laughs> of a, a training where you sit and listen to people tell you everything you ever want to know and then some about safety. Um, it was it was good. There was it just was a lot of information. So anyway, I won't, we're not going to take two days to do this. I'm going to just give you a few highlights. So first, I want to give you some statistics just to keep you aware. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's yeah. Is that good? Which we're, we're videotaping. I'm sorry, I'm a mover. So is Byron, you're in trouble. Is that good? Do you want me to go back and sit down? No, you're fine. I'm good? Just stay in this line? Hello, people watching this in your home or someplace? Okay. Um, all right, here are some statistics. An estimate 7.9% of men and 19% of women globally expect, experience sexual abuse prior to the age of 18. That's a lot of people. 
In America, one in four girls and one in six boys are sexually molested to some degree prior to age 18. An average of 117 youngsters will be molested before criminal prosecution. In other words, what this is saying is kids don't talk about it readily, and we often don't hear about it till years and years later when it's affecting their lives. Um, the incidence rate of child abuse and neglect in this country is about 10 times as high as the incident rate for all forms of cancer. Isn't that staggering? Abusers are adult, male, are adult males 90% of the time and relate better to children than to adults. This is the one that really gets me. Strangers account for only 10% of all abuse cases, while acquaintances 90%. Children usually know their abuser. So I want to touch again on what we do in children's ministry and the student ministries too, as far as protecting children and, and protecting you against a false accusation. Uh, first of all, we screen everybody. I think you all know that by now. We do the criminal background check. We do your reference checks. Um, I read each and every one of them thoroughly. And I'll tell you, reading those Faith statements are so cool. That's my favorite part. It's, it's, I love what you all share. Um, this year, in the past, we have said, okay, they don't have it all done yet, but they're in a room with someone who has, so we're going to let it be okay, and we're not doing that anymore. So if you are not completely screened, when we start our programming, you will not be allowed to serve, and we will contact you and let you know. So please, if you haven't done everything or if you're not sure, um, go see Jill. She's got the list back there. Then we want um, we want an awareness of because you think the, the, the safety instruction that we went to was was from a camp, and their conditions are a lot different. You know, opportunities for counselors to be in the cabin with the kids alone and just when they're anywhere on the campgrounds, it's a little. Um, you need to be a little bit more cautious. We don't have that here, but we do have some things, and I want us to all to be aware, and I'm going to ask you if, you're, if you are a parent, at your time, whatever you think is good, to let your child know this. Um, but first of all, um, and actually I got, I, Bruce and I had a great talk today, and we were, we were talking about this, and um, he did a little test thing with his son, Joel, which Bruce always uses his kids for test things. I don't know if you know that, but I, I do. Um, and now you do. Um, but anyway, he asked Joel, um, if you were in the bathroom and an adult came in, would it bother you? No, no. What if a, an adult was in the bathroom and you were in there and he kind of like looked over the stall? And he says, well, that would be weird. And, and I'm adding the word a little creepy. Um, and Bruce said, yeah, that, that would be weird. But what happens is a child might think that's weird, but go no further with it. And we need to encourage our children any time they feel uncomfortable about something that is a little bit questionable or shady, they need to tell somebody. That's the big thing. Be aware and tell somebody. Um, and then he also asked him, okay, what if, what if he asked if this adult came in the bathroom and asked you if you needed any help? Well, that would be even weirder. Yes, it would. And what if he tried to come in the stall with you? Well, then, you know, then it's time to run. But, um, so just tell your kids to be aware of things that adults can do. And, and it will say, and this is the way uh, a sexual molester operates. It starts very innocently. Hi, how are you? How's your day going? You're just talking to him in the bathroom. And hey, you need any help? That sounds, that can sound very innocent and helpful. But as soon as the child hears that, I think they need to, you need to let them know that's the time to talk. That's the time to tell us. So, according to our bathroom procedures, if you're a preschool teacher, there are bathrooms right in the classroom. And our guideline is if the child is old enough and doesn't need any help, then they just go to themselves. If they're little and they need help, keep the door ajar. Don't close the door. Never be in the bathroom alone with a child where no one can see you. Never, ever, ever. Because um, even if nothing happens, you could be accused. So don't do that. Elementary, um, 
we have security. My husband is the security guy at West and sits out in the hall and besides looking at his phone and playing games, um, he also, I'm sorry, I'm having it. He also watches the kids. That's his big job, is when a child goes to you and you're in kid's station, he says, I need to go to the bathroom. You don't need to go anywhere with him. You say, fine. He goes out, there's one door, and Becky will tell you the only door we're going to use, because things, things look different everywhere. And when they leave, um, Danny watches whatever bathroom they go to, makes sure, you know, they're not in there for a half an hour or whatever, and, and then we'll make sure he gets back to you. And if by chance the child is taking a long time, and this has happened, then he'll stand outside and call in, um, or if it's a um, women's, if it's a girl, one of us will do that or, or kind of go in a little bit with somebody else so we're never alone. So anyway, you should never be in a bathroom alone with a child. That's kind of the bottom line. Uh, let's see if I need to talk about anything else there. Okay, now the other thing we want to talk about and along with this safety thing is the check-in and drop-off and pick-up procedure, which is not new, but we want to stress some things because we saw it getting a little lax this past year. Um, parents should be checking in their children. We have seen a lot of fourth graders come in and check them off for everybody and then try to get the kids there, and we do not want it to be that way. We used to have signs on all the kiosks. A parent should be the one do it, using the kiosk, signing their kids in, getting their kids to their classroom. Um, because then when you get to the classroom, that's not only your opportunity to meet your child's teacher, but you give them then um, the, the sticker that goes on the, on the clipboard. Um, so please make sure you escort your children to their different places. Um, when you pick them up, and, and we're changing this a little bit. Um, when kids are picked up, the parent has to show you the badge, their parent badge. There's two of them, and so it doesn't matter how many children they get, there's only two parent badges, one for the mom, one for the dad. So when a parent comes to you to pick up their child, you need to see that badge. When you see it, you circle that number on the clipboard. We are not taking name badges off anymore and putting them on the clipboard for a couple of reasons. First of all, if a child is roaming the hallway and we don't see a parent around, we want to know where he came from and be able to get the child back there and maybe the parent is still there. Also, we are going towards and actually doing that here at East this year. East is, um, it's new downstairs and there are um, locked doors once you get into the children's area. And so you, no one will, can, there's another way in here. And from this way, you cannot get in at all. I think they don't lock the other one. I think they lock this one. No one can get in that way. So everybody that comes in that way has to be wearing a badge, a parent badge. If a parent doesn't have the badge, we're not gonna let them in that secure hallway. And eventually when we get to the final phase at West, we'll do that there too. But it isn't that way yet, so we can't do it. So, yeah, well. Grandparents or anything like that? They have to have an, a parent badge. So, so the grandparents, so the maybe four badges? Is there no, no. So the parents loan them out to the grandparents? Yes, yes. We, the parents are responsible for those two name badges. If they wanna give it to somebody else, that's totally their call. But you have to see it, not just let them tell it to you. You have to see it and then circle. And that tells us, when we collect all those, if we see a name tag that's circled, that tells us, I saw that parent badge. Don't circle all of them and then just, you know, think you'll see all of them. Yes? For those who are new, would you tell them what that really looks like? Is it code? Oh, yeah. There's, it's just a little white sticker. It's smaller than the name tag the kids wear, and it's got their security code on it, which matches the security code on the name tag that they're wearing. So when they show that, the teacher can circle that code on the name tag. Ann? And if that gets lost, they can come to the registration table and show a picture ID, and we can reprint a parent badge for them. Did everybody hear that? So if a parent says, I lost it, don't don't say, oh, okay. Um, send them back to the Welcome Center. They'll reprint. And 
I'm going to do something this year. Because here's the other thing that happens, and maybe I'll be answering your question. We'll see. Um, if you know the parent, and you know that kid belongs to that parent, and they say, oh, it's out in the car. I dropped it somewhere. You say, oh, we'll either go find it or go get another one. And then if they say, but you know me. You know I'm, I'm this kid's parent. Yeah, well, I, I, I also know that Chris is putting plants out there. And she's going to find out who's sticking to this rule. So I, I can't. I can't. Blame it all on me. Just say, Chris won't let us do it. And if I get caught, I'm in big trouble. Which you will be. Um, did that answer your question? Which you're, okay, go ahead. Then, then, okay, so it, what, what Mike is saying is if, um, if a grandparent brings them, they know the phone number to check the child in, and then they lose that badge, and they go back to the welcome center, their ID may not match the last name. I think what we should do at that point is, um, I don't want you guys to make the decision, I want you to call me in on that. Because, I, well, at East, Vicki, Vicki, you're going to have to make that decision at East. <laughs> because yeah we have yeah yeah that's true we could call the parents to find out for sure Deb well we don't do that anymore that's not on the form anymore because when like if you have already all registered your children a grandparent may come and they the kids already got you know the form and um we just because we just go by the security number we're not going by names or anything we're only going by that security number so the kids won't have a name they'll just have a security number no they'll, the kid will have a name okay No, it's different every Sunday. Okay. Different number every Sunday, so that's why they have to show that every Sunday. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Good, good questions. Yes, Crystal. So before we could fill in for our kids, our kids are allowed to do these two. And so, like, my parents go to our church, and so if, if they lost the badge and they went to the counter, would it show their name that I had put it in the system? We don't have that line on the form anymore, do we? No. So it shouldn't be on there. I, I mean, that's why I, I want to be called in at that point. Uh, but I know who, who your parents are. Right. I mean, they're there enough. <laughs> but we'll, I mean, we just, we're all doing, it's all for safety. It's all about the kids. It's what we're encouraging and what will be once everything is secure. Yeah. Be, they'll be wearing it. We're yeah, they need to wear them. They need to wear it. And hopefully they, they stick pretty well. Um, which you probably noticed if you've washed a child's clothing and left that, left that sticker out there. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments? Yeah, Andy. Uh, will there be a communication out to all the parents? Yes. To sort of set the expectations? Yes. We'll be sending a mass email next week. We've got a few things on that list of what we want to communicate. So, yeah, good question. Yeah, so they know that. Um, I remember when we first started this system, and I had a parent come to, I was, I don't know if I was subbing or what, I was in a, a, a room. And the mom came to me, and I know the mom, and I know the mom's kid, and she says, I left it out in the car. And I looked at her, and I said, well, can you go get it? And she just looked at me, and I said, I know. I know you, and I know your kid. But if we're relying on that rather than our system, then there was no point to purchase this expensive system. So we have to make the system work. So I did it. You can do it. You can blame it on me, and we'll keep our kids safe. All right, um, I am very excited. Uh, now is the time when we're going to learn about our true curriculum, and we have a special guest. Come on up, Byron. I don't know how many of you know Byron Reagans. He is, yeah, go ahead, Clark. <laughs> Byron is from our church. His wife is on staff, and he has been a David C. Cook representative for how many years? Uh, yeah. A hundred? 30. 30. And his 30. territory keeps getting bigger and bigger because he used to teach and now he's got too many churches to cover. And um, But he knows this curriculum 
inside and out, and he's going to share with you some of the philosophy and and history and whatever else. Hey, let's give it up for Chris and the team, huh? You know, um, this, this is, I, I gotta admit, this is kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting, kind of just a little different for me to do that, like with my own homies, you know what I'm saying? My own, my own people. There's so many people in this room that I don't know. I mean, I see Clark Cheney, golly, and Ann, wow, some of us. Mrs. Strawn, wow, some of us have John Dieter. We've just been at it for a long, long time. And there's so many new people and how exciting it is for us as uh, we come together as a leadership team and really begin to look at a new year, uh, a new season, thank you, a new season of ministry. And I do have the privilege of covering the country for David C. Cook. Many of you are, are probably familiar with David C. Cook, and I've had the privilege to, to be at that place for 30 years doing ministry around the country. And I find myself this time of year doing this all the time. And for this kind of turnout tonight, it's epic. Give it up one more time. <laughs> For the leadership team right here, and then you, leadership team, give it up for these guys. Man, incredible. So much stuff going on for you guys to carve out some time to be with us tonight. Uh, to come together as a team, kind of a powwow before you kick off the new year, and then just to kind of, in about 20 minutes, kind of... Um, kind of take you in through the back door and bring you into the conversation about this stuff called true and what it is and and um, why it came about. It's, it's really about a three hour conversation that I now have to do in about 15 minutes, Ralph. So you keep me around on that schedule if you would do that. But about five years ago, I had the privilege to um, pulled together ministry leaders from all over North America out in Orange County. Not bad in October. And as I brought a lot of people together like Bruce and Sterling and specifically Chris, we began to ask questions. And as we asked questions, we began to whiteboard. And as we began to whiteboard, all of this stuff that you're about to use, embark on, was really a dream that we had back in October some five years ago. Uh, Simon Sinek, and some of you probably have read some of his stuff, and maybe you have, uh, one of his books that I have found extremely intriguing right now is Start With The Why. And some of you might be saying tonight, why am I here? Why have the door is locked, you're going nowhere. <laughs> Why have I committed to this year? And we began to kind of look at, at David C. Cook, why are we going to invest several million dollars into a project? And it was a very simple answer. As we listened to practitioners from across North America, it was very apparent to us that something is a miss. Something is wrong with the publishing houses material and all of this material, including a number of resources that David C. Cook has, and many of them are very good, and there's a lot of good published curriculum out there, and our church here has used a number of incredible curriculums over, over many, many years. But as we really started wrestling with the why, it really took us to, uh, and if you brought your Bibles, being good Baptist, you can go to, uh, go to Luke 18.8 with me real quickly. Um, because this, this is, I'm hoping why we're here tonight. Um, this passage, I'm really hoping... Um, this is why you're involved in the ministry here as we're speaking into the lives of children. And I want you to know, um, I am in this with you. So I am not going to come and share philosophy and 
um, kind of the big picture with you and leave and never be a part of the ministry here. I am. I have told Chris I want to be very involved. What's going on? And to coach, to teach, to be alongside of you, as really we're looking at shifting a philosophy, a, a different landscape. True is much more than just a curriculum. It's a philosophy of ministry. But as we began to drill down, this is the passage that really stuck with us. And I hope we'll stick with you tonight. Uh, it's, it's Luke 18, 8. So basically what's going down is the coming of the kingdom is about to happen. And Jesus is talking about it. Um, then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this evil judge. Even, the, even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who plead with him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when I, the Son of Man, return, how many will I find who have faith? So it really begs the question, why do we do this? Why are we here tonight? As Simon Sinek says, start with the why. We're here, I believe, because we want to invest in children and families, to invest in their faith, to help increase the faith, to help them practice their faith, right? That's why we do this. And that's why we embarked on this project at David C. Cook, some five years ago was to really hone in on this thing called faith. I am not that smart. I am not at all brilliant. I'm a pastor's kid. I've been around the church my whole life. I live in the church now as I travel across North America. I work with some of the most incredible churches in the country, none better than my church. I want you to know that. But I do know this, and as we look at this faith thing, that when Jesus comes back, will he look at us and say, wow, kids under construction, you all were about helping kids understand what faith is. You did all that you could do Sunday morning and Wednesday night and all the other times we're involved in ministry and you're involved in ministry. And look at this turnout as you guys are thinking about this new ministry this year. When it's all said and done, can we say, wow, we were about pleading and asking the Holy Spirit of God to awaken a child's faith so they would explore and walk with Jesus the rest of their lives. You know, we've kind of been seduced in our society and certainly in the Fox Valley area. You're, this church is no different than really any church that I work with across America and in Canada. The seduction that we have really fallen into in the church, and, and we, we often fall into it in children's ministry, is it's got to be fun. In fact, on the way here tonight, I'm not going to mention the church, but someone had a bunch of signs out in their yard kind of promoting their church. And one of the words in that sign was fun. And I thought to myself, wow, that's really interesting. I don't know, uh, because you who know me, I am a party waiting to happen. <laughs> but I don't know if one of the words, if you give me three words, I don't think one of the words that I would use to really want to describe my children's ministry that I'm now a part of is fun. There is no one better in Geneva and the state of Illinois in our country than you all doing fun. But this is something I know for sure. Children and students are walking away from the church and walking away from their faith. There's many a reasons for it. But one of the reasons is many of our children, and some of you are here tonight, our students, and maybe we even as adults, 
We know about God, but we really don't know God. Think about that. We, we know a lot about God. What, what do we know about God? Let me hear from you guys. Just say it out loud. What do we know about God? Come on. Love. Love. He's love. What else? Creator. He's a creator. What else? Holy. He's very holy. What else? Omnipotent. Omnipotent. Big word. He's always present. He's here and everywhere all the time, right? What else? Powerful. Powerful. Yeah. Wise. Wise. Sovereign. What was that? Sovereign. Sovereign, yeah. Good Baptist. You've always <laughs> got to go with the sovereign word for sure. Good job, Chrissy. You get a prize later. Anything else? Just. Just. He's the same as he was yesterday. Today. He's the same as he was yesterday, and he'll be awesome tomorrow. Let me ask us, because I am one of the us. What are we doing here this fall to really create space for kids to hear the voice of God and respond? When kids respond, that's when they really begin to flex their muscle and really understand faith and have the ability to really hear the voice of God through you as you teach, coach, shepherd, read passages, yeah, the real why for us is we read Luke 18, 8, when Jesus returns, will he see faith being worked out because of our ministry here at First Baptist Geneva? It will be a number of reasons, but certainly one will be if we create space for kids to really begin to know who God is. Okay, so we're going to do that really two ways. Uh, Chris wanted me very quickly to give you kind of a background, and I've done that very, very quickly. True has been out there for about five years all across North America, now going internationally. There's a number of things that are really, really unique about True, but I want you just to think about two things tonight. Would you turn to your neighbor and just give them the peace sign? All right? Come on, guys. Play along. All right? I want to yield, okay? Number one is, I think you're going to love this thing we call the Big God Story. Uh, when we began dreaming on this, there were a number of things that we were attracted to, and this is probably one of the most unique pieces of truth. The cool thing about true is chronologically we go through scripture. It's three years, we go through, come back, go through again. But the beautiful thing is, unlike many curriculums that we have used here, and you know I'm right on this, you who have been teaching a long time, many curriculums you hop around Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, New Testament, New... You know, and kids are just, I mean... We're all screwed up because we don't know exactly how this Bible thing is really put together, right? So the cool thing about true is chronological. So, so a number of you are really going to really dig that, that is very sequential. It's all really tied closely together. There is some validity about helping kids really understand the books of the Bible. But more importantly, a new angle that we're taking is we really believe when you start in the old and you bring it through the new, we weave in this redemptive thread, this redemptive story that all through this incredible meta-narrative of Scripture, which basically means it's a story of God. This, this, this is a love story book, this Bible thing here, you know, that we all read from all the time. It's what we go to. But when you really peel it back, guys, my team, this is really a love story about God. Every story is about God, Jesus. And what we've done in many curriculums is we've made Paul the hero. We've made Esther the hero. We've made David the hero. We've made Moses, or as I think one of the coffee kids said years ago, Noses. So 
it was a cross between Noah and Moses. We've really made them the hero, but no, they're, they're not the hero. The hero of every story, every weekend, is God. So you're going to really hear God kept his promise. God is a deliverer. God is a merciful God. So we want to applaud and make God champion through the big God story. So then your kids can step back and see as Christ followers, they too are a part of the big God story. It doesn't end, but it continues with us as we keep telling the story of faith, the big God story. I think you're going to like it. Secondly, this is probably the most, um, the most appreciated, valued, spoken about uh, piece of truth. And for some of us, it's going to be a little hard <coughs> with truth, to be honest, because we really believe that the Holy Spirit of God is the teacher. We're a coach, we're a guide, but as we pray and prepare during the week, aren't we just petitioning the Holy Spirit of God to be present and to teach and to use us and our teammates and all the other volunteers? Absolutely. So for some of us, um, it, it's, it's taking our hand off the wheel a little bit and really listening to God as far as what he is saying to us and how we should shepherd and the questions we should ask and always asking, what is God saying to you? How is God speaking to you? In essence, how is your faith growing? Those, those are the questions we ask. Worship as response stations, which we're going to do in just a few minutes. This is, uh, I wish I could have said it was my idea. Again, I'm not that smart. I just simply know that a lot of our kids know about God, but some, very few, really know him. And unless we create space for kids to really meet with God, this next generation will be no different than the one we're currently in. See, there's no one better than us folk from First Baptist Geneva on doing stuff. But John Ortberg, in one of his many awesome books, really talks to us about being with God. When's the last time we were really with God? I mean, really with him. So very intentionally and purposefully, True wants to create space, or what we call worship as response stations. All right. I saw this for the first time five years ago at Rock Harbor Church in Costa Mesa, California, which, by the way, this is where True came from. David C. Cook partnered. We had 25 to 30 field testing churches around North America that field tested this as we rolled it out five years ago. It was a Saturday night. It was a room half this size. Squeezed in this room was about 75 upper elementary kids. Can you feel the pain? Can you feel it right now? And so Matt Barnes gets up and leads these kids in worship. It, it was pretty good worship, but we can do just as well. Then... Uh, Tommy got up and told the big God story. And it wasn't a video. Uh, he wasn't even in costume. He simply, Clark, just got up and he told the big God story because we believe the Bible is enough. We do support you with videos and so on, and I believe in creativity, but the word really <laughs> is enough. So as he told the big God story, I mean, the kids were in it to win it, and when this thing really hit a tipping point for me was when Matt came back and said, before we go into our small groups, after hearing that big God story and being challenged to really submit ourselves to a loving God, there's only one other thing we can do, and that is just respond in worship. 
So what I want us to do, he said, um, we're going to take like the next 15, 20 minutes, and we've got the prayer wall, the giving station, where you give your money, you give yourself to help, to serve someone, the encouragement station, and the journal station. And he's like, for the next 15 minutes, I want you to pray, where should you go? Where should you go and respond to God in what you just heard? Now, if you want to stay where you're at, you can do that and just respond to God. But if you'd like to get up and go and respond and just talk to God and let him talk to you, we want to give you time to do that. So, you know, like we always do in church, we turn the lights down, put on some cool music. And so for the next 15 minutes, it was this quiet. As kids just got up or stayed where they were, they went to the prayer wall, they went to the giving station, they went to the encouragement station, they went to the journal station, and they met with God. If that's not fun, we are in the wrong business. If we want to be all about fun, and I don't think that's our main value, we should just turn them loose and send them to the park district and have fun. We'll balance fun. You guys are awesome at that, as I said earlier. But I believe Luke 18.8, if we're going to do that, this place has to be a place where kids, students, and adults can meet with God, can begin exercising that faith muscle, and we come alongside and help shape this next generation. Fifteen minutes. No discipline issues. The boys were better than the girls. You're like, you're lying. No, I'm not. I'm telling the truth. Now, it's a possibility. To that point, there was some discipline issues. But you know something, as we leaders, coaches, shepherds come alongside the kids and model this, they will watch us and what we're about to do in a few minutes. You're going to see what this worship as a response station is all about. When we model this in front of our kids, they'll get it. And this will be a rhythm of what we do Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, creating space. See, what we often do, we look at our curriculum. Look, I've taught for years. You have as well. Maybe some of you are new. You're going to enjoy this, this new and different approach. Great content, great creativity. But we often want to cover everything. We want to do everything in the book. We want to do the messiest crafts and projects that gets the custodians all hacked off at us. We want to get through all this stuff. And at the end of the day, we go home and we say, well, we got through all this stuff. And then when the Holy Spirit of God begins to say, but did, did your kids really experience me today? Did they really understand more about their faith and grow in a Christ likeness? That's the question we have to answer. So these are two huge features that I think you're really going to dig. The big God story and creating space, creating that worship as a response. You know, one of the beautiful things about our adult worship services is that often we have a chance to respond. And that's what we're doing with truth. And I think what we've often done in children's ministry with curriculums, I've been around this for a long time, is we try to keep it messy, we try to keep it fun, we try to keep it goofy, and we're light on the gospel, because again, Mrs. Strong, you just wanna make sure the kids have a good time and come back next week. I think God has called this leadership team, who I've spent a lot of time with, to something more. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of this whole process with you. Thirdly, um, not only did we find in that why thing that 
children were walking away from their faith and they knew all the facts about God. I mean, they could even tell you like the kind of tar that Noah used on the ark, really, and the kind of gopher wood or wood that it was. I mean, really, at the end of the day, is that really all that important? Isn't something far more important? How are our kids really, really experiencing God and God's Son, Jesus, and living for Him 24-7? The other piece we found was uh, a lot of parents kind of drop off the kids. We do the work, and they do very little. And when you look at Scripture, it's quite the opposite. Parents are supposed to be doing the work, and we're supposed to support. And a number of you were fantastic at that. Jackie and I, we struggled with that. She was better than I. But with true, something that we do, you'll get familiar with this thing called Home Front Weekly and Home Front Monthly. But the Home Front Weekly is a pre-teach for next Sunday. So what we're wanting to do, parents are primary, is one of our values. We're wanting to equip parents to be the spiritual parent that God has called them to be. So a way of doing that is creating something that parents can live with their child during the week and go through this big God story together as a family and experience that. So then when our kids show up on a Sunday morning, they've already been warmed to it. The response to this has been fantastic. So those are some things I don't want to just overdo you with stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there. But I believe God has called you here this season to invest in children. And when you invest in children, you invest in families. I don't think there's anything more important in our church than investing in families. Strong, healthy families Make a strong, healthy church. Make a strong, healthy village. Make a strong, healthy county, state, country. So I'm excited to walk with you, to learn with you, as we begin to look at a different approach, a different style, to do Luke 18.8. I think it's going to be a great year. God bless you. Chris? Are you excited? I am. I, you got a little of that um, preacher blood in you there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to be over here. Everybody's waving me over. Um, we are very excited about the true curriculum. We have spent time with Byron and in, in learning from him and um, just really looking at this curriculum in depth, and we're excited for you to be able to use it. Um, he's, he, I agree so much with these. I love that you mentioned those two points, the Big God Story and the response stations. And we are going to do the response stations right now. And so I want to give you a little direction, but not too much. We have four response stations in the room. There's one over here, one there, one in the back, and one over here. We're going to give you 10 minutes, and you can go to one or two or three or four or zero if you just want to sit in your chair and pray. Um, there, the directions are there. It's all self-explanatory. Just read it and do what it says. We ask you to be quiet. This is a reverent time, and this is an example of what the kids will be doing on Sunday morning. When you have finished, just come back to your chair and sit quietly, and then when the 10 minutes is up, I may have to interrupt some of you, um, but we'll, um, we'll continue then. But, um, I'm just going to release you to, to go to the different stations. It doesn't matter what order. There's no order to anything. Um, so just do it. Yeah, Teron? Can I name them? Um, if I can see from here, this is um, Courage to Obey. The one in the back, can you see it, Sarah? I will follow. The one over here, Reflect on You. I don't remember. Commit to God. 
So those are the four stations, and just see what you want to see and experience it. This is your, this is the time that we allow the Holy Spirit to just work in your heart. Um, we have directed these stations toward you as teachers or parents. Um, so you've got ten minutes. Every lesson ends with a blessing. The teachers will bless the children and send them on their way to be a blessing to the people in their lives for the rest of the week. So we're going to do the same thing with you tonight. Um, I want you to uh, take a posture of your hands out in front of you and just lift it up. It's kind of symbolic of your willingness and readiness to respond to God's Spirit and receive what He has in store for you. As you're doing that, I'm going to read a verse from Matthew, Matthew 6, 31 to 33. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Your Heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Now I want you to clench your hands tightly. Ask God to reveal something you might be worrying about or holding too tightly. It can be ministry-related. It can be personal. But, but uh, sit with them clenched for a moment in God's presence. Then when you're ready, slowly open your palms as a symbol of giving your worries to God as I speak a blessing over you. May you rest in the knowledge that God knows what you need and he will take care of you. May you praise him this week for his goodness in your life. Amen. All right, now we are going to go to our departmental meetings. The places of them are listed at the bottom or maybe on the back of your um, agenda. Preschool and nursery, please stay here for a little while. Nursery will go back there in a minute, but stay right here. Um, everybody in elementary is going to go next door to the chapel. Uh, Masterpiece is going to stay in the back of this room back there. And the Welcome Center, um, people are going to meet in um, the seating area of the restrooms, which is not the stalls. But there's a little seating area out there. So go ahead and, and go on to those, and you'll learn exactly what your morning looks like and the details of what's involved. And when your department is done, you're done. Thank you so much for coming. After that, isn't that cool? I can't wait for our kids, for our kids to get to experience that um, every Sunday. <laughs> For them to come every week expecting to have that time and not just coming uh, coming to get to know their shepherd better or to get to know the kids in their class better, but coming expectant to hear from God, to learn week after week after week what his voice sounds like, how God speaks to them. Um, I'm super excited and I get crying if I talk, think about it too long, so I'm not going to think about it very long. But, um, First of all, um, this is, um, you heard about the big God story. And we're going to have this kind of timeline. I just wanted you to see this is a three-year program. Um, Chris did a little, um, a little game with us. She put all the, the characters, like paper dolls. They had their names on them, but all the Bible characters, Old and New Testament, not everyone, but some of the majors, were, um, she had paper dolls of them. And she put them out to us and said, okay, put them in order. And we were like, Rah! And so I am so excited because your kids are going to be able to put them in order. You know? And it's not about, let me just reiterate this. Something that Byron said, Byron, come on up. He's, he's in with us. I pulled him in. But he, um, something that Byron talked about information, information, and even, um, you know, the story, the Bible stories that we know and the history of the Bible that we know, it can all become like rocks that the kids pick up week after week. They're adding another rock to their bag, but at any point in their life, they can sit that bag down and move on with their life. 
and what, what our desire is and what God's heart is and what True's goal is, is for that information to, um, to not only, to not just be in their head, to, but to become transformational in their life so that it's not something they can sit down, that it's, that it's in them. So that's what we're, we're totally excited about. Um, I'm, you've already been inspired, so I'm going to stop inspiring. Um, I'm just going to talk to you kind of about um, the way the morning is going to progress. Um, a beautiful thing about True is that it is, it is made for um, probably about 90 minutes. And as you know, we don't have 90 minutes. So we are, we're not going to try to cram it all in and um, sacrifice our quality time with the kids. But we are going to do the parents a favor, and we are going to start this sucker um, 10 minutes before service time. So if, for instance, you serve at 9.15, um, True starts at 9.05. We're going to start activities at 9.05. Parents are going to be encouraged to bring their kids, drop them off, then go upstairs, have a cup of coffee, and make it into to big church by 9.15. Um, we know that that's, it's not going to happen. That's best case scenario. But we are going to be ready for the kids at 9.05, which means if you are a shepherd, I should have asked, are most of you um, shepherding? Everybody is shepherding almost, right? I think everybody except for Julia. She's our tech gal. Yeah. Um, so, um, is there another position I can have? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what we're asking for, what we're asking for is for you to get there a full 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes before, before the service time. So I would love for you to be in place. We've always said um, 9 o'clock, but if we could push that just a couple of minutes even early because we are really hoping that our kids will be there at 9.05 um, for a, a time called Anticipate. As the kids come in to our room, and, it, and it's going to look different. It looks so cool. I was able to go down there today with my I donned my hard hat and went down, and it looks really awesome. Y'all are going to love it. Um, this is uh, how many of you are east? Easters are there, and west. Everybody else is west. Okay. Um, it, it looks awesome downstairs, too. I'm so excited about our new facilities and then and the, this launch with our new philosophy. God has just placed everything perfectly, um, and, and it's, it's going to be great. As kids arrive, there you know, we've always, well, um, most of us have kept points, you know, when they bring their Bible or memorize a verse, and that's been kind of like a big headache. So we're going to do something different. True encourages us to do something called traditions. And as kids enter, what will happen in a couple of, in about 10 days, um, is there will be a big jar at the back, and there will be a, a bunch of marbles. And as kids come in, they will, there will be a sign there that says, um, if, did you bring your Bible today? If you did, you add a marble. Um, did you bring a friend today? If you did, you add a marble. Did you, do you know your remember verse? If you do, you add a marble. We're going to be doing this as it's on the honor system. I'm not really checking. But I'm hoping that that will happen alongside parents. At that point, it's going to be very close to, you know, the entrance to the room. So, um, so my thought is that parents will enter and, you know, um, Kenner, do you know your, do you know your remember verse? What is your remember verse? And then Kenner will be able to say it to her mom or say, Dad Gum, I don't know it. And then mom will say, Well, Dad Gum, we need to work on it next week. And so Kenner and her mom will add the marbles to the jar. And as the jar fills up, as we fill our jar, as a total faith community, as we fill our jar, then we'll have a big celebration at the end. So that's kind of how the morning will start. We'll come in, we'll, they'll put their um, name tags on. Just like we ended last year, they'll put their name tags. The moms will put their name tags on their, um, on the clipboards, just like last time. That's going to look the same. Um, I had you pick up an attendance sheet. As you can see on there, there are, there's space for eight kids on that attendance sheet. So you don't have to flip through a whole bunch because we're not matching up tags anymore. So there are going to be eight. So at most, I would think you would have to look through two to, at pickup time to go through and circle. 
Okay, everybody clear on that, kind of what's happening? All right, I'm skipping through. Um, then comes anticipate. So hopefully, you know, best case scenario, the scenario they're in at like 9, 10, they enter the room. And we have something called anticipate. I would love it if I could show you a quick video. Would y'all, is that all right? Just hover over it. I can't see my thing. Oh, here it is. Look, it got lost. Okay, here we go. I did the wrong one. I hovered over the wrong one. Okay, here we go. After you've learned something amazing about God, what do you feel like doing? Large group response is all about letting the children explore that very question. Whether it's through silence, or writing a prayer on the prayer wall, or singing and dancing with an instrument, or speaking scripture out loud, this is their time to respond to God in a personal but communal way. And this is when the Holy Spirit really gets to transform His kids. As children think about how the story they've heard has impacted them, the Spirit has space to move touch each child. The way the kids reach back out and respond to God allows them to truly meet with Him. It's about the encounter, not just the information. And the opportunity to respond continues as children break up into small groups for small group responding. Here, children can share openly about their personal thoughts and experiences in a relational setting. They can discuss as well as create a meaningful piece of art as part of their response to God. The art will sometimes be something they can take home, but sometimes they work on something as a group that can go up in their classroom as a reminder of what God has done. As your team plans for large group and small group respond times, try to create an atmosphere of space. This may mean pausing for an uncomfortably long time after you've asked your preschoolers a wonder question. It may mean spontaneously prolonging a time of singing or carrying on a discussion that seemingly has little to do with your curriculum notes. Be flexible and attentive to how the Holy Spirit is moving in your group. You'll most likely be blown away by what He does with and through your kids. Okay, I'm glad y'all watched that, but you're going to have to remember because the wrong video is embedded right here. Did y'all notice that? <laughs> okay, so that is not what anticipate time looks like. Anticipate time is um, is what happens at the very beginning, and it is kind of like um, what I would call, like if you were to see a movie trailer, you know, it kind of piques their interest but doesn't give away the whole thing, although lately they kind of give away the whole thing. Um, some weeks, for instance, there's, uh, if y'all want to pull out, I gave each of you a sample lesson, so it might help if we kind of walk through that together. So this is less, this is 1.1. Now, shepherds. You will not, shepherds at West Campus, you will not be getting that full packet every week. It's TMI. That's this one? Yes. You're, I'm showing that to you right now, but you won't be, you won't have that whole thing to look through every time. I just want you to see for right now that this is the full thing, but I'm only going to send you what you need. Um, so as you can see in that anticipate section, Sometimes I think this particular week it is a craft. Sometimes it will be. Sometimes it will be quite crafty. You know, we we used to just have craft time, but sometimes it's decoding like a hieroglyphic message or. Um, and sometimes what I'm really excited about is sometimes those are kind of um, large group games where we'll kind of move the chairs out of the way, and as the kids enter, there's a specific game that's going to prepare us for the story that's to come. We'll talk a little bit later in our site-specific groups about how we're exactly going to man that area because we don't have a craft team, you know, like we've had in the past. It's going to look a little different, and we'll talk about that later. But each Anticipate Day looks different. Um, we're switching it up, switching it up a little bit. After Anticipate, we go into Celebrate, which is large group time. This is 920. Most all the kids are here and present by 920. Um, the celebrate part begins, as you can see, with welcome and traditions. 
we are, we'll welcome the kids and then we're going to talk about how full our jar is. Um, we'll go over our remember verse using some very cool video that, that True has, has already put together. There's a fun connect question where we ask, I think that day it's, um, what is our connect question this day? If you could spend the whole day with anybody, who would it be? And so you just ask the people on each side of you, you know, that it's just a way for them to connect with each other. Um, and then we have um, a prayer of release. And that is, yes, Mr. Cheney. The verse, is it one a week, one a month? The remember verse is about one a month, is about one a month. So they, they spend some time on that remember verse. And what translation are we using? We are going to use what is they, what is in their Bible, which is the NLT. Okay, thanks. Their Bible. Um, we, at that point, there will be a prayer of release. It's going to be a time when their hearts are quieted. They're encouraged to open their palms. And our large group leader will, um, or the host, will, will, will come in and, and will just ask all the kids to sit quietly and quiet our hearts before God and help us to hear from Him. At that point, um, the big God story takes over. Um, some weeks there will be a video. That's about one out of every six weeks. Um, there, and, um, but we have six at the West Campus, we have six storytellers who have agreed to teach one out of every eight, I'll explain that in a second, eight weeks. And that storyteller will tell the story on Saturday night and both hours on Sunday. So when it is their week, they're all in for that week, but they only do it. So we have a storyteller that will come in. Like Byron said earlier, it doesn't have to be a lot of pomp and circumstance. The Bible speaks for itself. The Bible is God's word, and it is fully sufficient um, to teach us. And it's interesting and fun. Okay, um, East will look a little different, but y'all can talk about that. Um, then that time goes from 9:20 to 9:50. Um, actually, at, at 9:40, we're gonna. Our goal is to go into worship response stations at that time. That's kind of what we just experienced. Obviously, that was on your level. Our first grade, grade, graders can't read a whole, you know, Psalm 139. And so it, so the, the response stations will look much more kid-friendly. We will not be using candles. Um, <laughs> um, we will do other things to set the quiet space, you know, with music. Um, and, and not every kid needs quiet to hear from God. In fact, a lot of kids need the opposite of quiet to hear God speak. And I want to assure you that we're going to give those kids equal opportunity to, it's, it's a matter of space. Space for us looks quiet, but space for kids doesn't always look quiet. Um, kids were created for fun, and we are not taking away all the fun and just having quiet. What we're saying is we're giving them space to hear from God. And sometimes that's going to look very wild and crazy. Um, but as long as they are having an opportunity to encounter God, that is, that is the goal. Um, at 9.50, we go into your respond times. And that's when you, as small group leaders, will take your kids into their small group and they'll have a time in their group to respond to what they just heard, um, heard from God and heard in their big God story. They will reflect. A lot of times in our small groups, I feel like we just do a lot of review, you know, just hash out what we've just talked about. Um, and we want it to be bigger than that. Um, the goal is that as they sit around their tables and as they are in their small groups, that they will begin to hear from others what God is doing in their friend's life. What God's doing, I cry every time I say this, what God's doing in your life as a shepherd, you know? Um, because God does amazing things, and you are free to share that with your kids. This is their faith community. So as, as kids open up and share with each other what, what God's doing in their life and what they're hearing from God, 
um, that's going to free the other kids up who, who are maybe like, I don't know what God sounds like. But then when I hear that my friend heard God in nature or heard from God when she was reading his word, that clues me in on knowing what God sounds like when he speaks. So that's what, we're, that's what we want to grow up into these kids is knowing how to listen, listen for God and to experience him and to encounter him, not just to have more information about him. So during your respond times, you can see it there, there's a time for reflection. And, and like I say, those questions are, um, they can go pretty deep. Um, some, some of them in the weeks ahead look like, how does God use hard situations to show us that he's going to take care of us? And I'll guarantee you, you've got some kids with hard situations in your groups. Whether or not they share the first week, there's no guarantee. But just for them to start thinking. And I'm going to challenge you to let there be silence. When you pose a question, it's, it's, our, it's our tendency to jump in and answer. But sometimes it does need to just be a little bit of silence. Let them think on it. Let them contemplate just a little bit. Um, how is God taking care of you in your life? Or what hard circumstance has God used or, or has God gotten you through? Um, so, so those are some of the questions. Now, while you're asking those hard questions, it also gives you, there's a create slash engage portion. So that's, you see that column that says engage. It's on page um, right there. It's on page 10. So they're, they're on, the, on the reflect, those are your questions. And then at the same time, in my mind, kind of the same time that you're reflecting, you're also going to be having this cool mission where you have masking tape, um, you know, two strips of masking tape, five feet apart, and you've got half the kids on that side and half the kids on this side, and only a piece of construction paper as a wrap. And so these rescuers have to go over yonder and rescue their friends with just this piece of construction paper. Um, so this is kind of a game that they're playing. And the, the goal here, you know, the goal in the first week is for them to understand that through the whole big God story, um, Jesus is key. Jesus is our redeemer. He's the great rescuer. And so, that, so that's what you can be talking about as you're playing this game. Um, so that's, that's just one week, for example. A lot of weeks, it's a, maybe a five-foot piece of butcher paper that the kids take a turn outlining a place where they see God. And so you're creating that as a group. There will be other weeks where they're creating something individually, but every week, that's going to look a little different. So when you're in small group, you become the craft person, kind of. Not really, but, you know, kind of. Okay, so, um, so you see what I'm saying about how these things can happen simultaneously. It doesn't have to be, let's sit down and talk, and then we do this. I think that this can become pretty natural, and it can just all kind of flow. Um, of course, you know, you know your kids, you know what works for them. I will tell you this, we have an amazing dream team of resource, a resource crew, and they're going to be getting all your stuff together for you. So when you arrive on Sunday morning, at what time? Pretend you're at 915. 8.55. Um, there will be a bag or a bin or a Ziploc bag or something, depending on how big your stuff you need for the day is. It will be there marked with your group number ready for you to pick up that will get, get you through the day. So you will have already seen your lesson, but I'm just telling you, you don't have to come up with the masking tape. I'm going to get your masking tape for you. I'm even going to put it down on the floor for you. Can't wait till you see the floor, by the way. Um, then, okay, so that, so that happens in small group time. Then, one of my favorite parts, uh, what Chris just did over us, she offered a blessing over us. Um, we think of blessing as something that just happens over mealtime, right? Don't you think, did you ask for blessing? You know. Um, but true gives us, it inspires us to um, 
you know, out the door blessings and wake up in the morning blessings and go to bed at night blessings and go out into the world and be a blessing blessings. And that is what you have the amazing opportunity to do with your class of kids. I'm telling you, that is a responsibility and an opportunity that um, you're lucky. That's, I'm excited for you. So, so let's just pretend we're at, we're at like 10-10, um, something like that. And like the first, okay, and Brian is preaching, so the first parents come to come, or Jeff is preaching and it's 10-15. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, as the first parent comes, um, this, is, this is kind of when I see that starting. Um, every lesson ends with a blessing. The blessing gives parents and leaders the opportunity to speak truth over the children's lives. Um, this time transitions each child from being blessed into being a blessing. And, you know, in my mind, it looks like this. The parents begin to come, and you just invite them in. Um, I'm going to bless your kids right now. Won't you come on in and join us? Come join us for our blessing today. And, you know, who's going to say no to that? But, um, and they might come and just place their hands on their child. Or they might, oh, I'm going to cry again. They might kneel by their kid, you know, and look them in the eye. As you get to bless them kids. How awesome is that? <laughs> And then you will speak that blessing that you see right there on your page. It's all written out for you. You don't have to be um, a super spiritual, you know, going to come up with a blessing. Um, it's all right there. A lot of times it's scripture. Uh, uh, sometimes it's, it's words of encouragement, um, a prayer of commission, whatever it is. It's written there for you. You can tweak it if you want to, but you don't have to. It's all right there. And then at that point... That's when you start checking the security labels, circling things, and sending them out. <laughs> what a rough transition that is. Um, hey, Beck, can I get yes. you to something? Sweet to Don't you love her? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> she has really captured the heart and the vibe of where we're going, and we're going to get there, but. You know, one of the pillars, there are seven pillars, and we're in the process of, of changing that right now. The pillar word's going out, and something else is coming in. I think it's uh, seven, fam uh, seven children and student ministry essentials or something like that. But one of them it, it is parents are primary, right? And you heard me talk about that um, earlier. And if that's true, if what we're trying to do is equip my friend here uh, to be a spiritual parent with her family, we need to kind of model what that looks like. So, so much of what you're going to do, don't feel the pressure, we're going to get there. But so much of what you're doing is modeling this in front of family. And what we're hearing now after this being in the marketplace now for five years, is you have guys, and we, we get emails all the time, guys are praying with their kids for the very first time. Never, ever done it before. It's because you modeled that with the family. So what we try to do Sunday morning, same kind of stuff they can replicate, word we use, replicate during the week. Same thing with the worship as response stations. Isn't that cool when you start thinking about young families having a response station each week as a family. They come together through Homefront Monthly, which you'll get familiar with, and just in a very short amount of time, just worship as a family. Again, what we do Sunday morning, simply the kinds of things that parents can do during the week. This faith community will be all over this, but we're just going to have to model it Sunday morning. This is what it looks like. And just as an aside, we in children's ministry, um, we're kind of like Home Depot, we say. Right. Um, you can do it, and we can help. That's right. We want to empower the parents right. that it's not scary. You can do it. It's not something difficult. And we're going to give you practical ways. If it's an app on your phone, say this blessing. You know, we're going to we want to show you that. Um, we don't want to add more work. Just come alongside what they're already doing and encourage them. That's our job. Right. Um, so I'm going to hurry real quick. But um, every 6th and 13th week, there's something called Remember and Celebrate Weekends. You'll be hearing more about that. Um, it's a kind of week, the week where we 
get the, okay, a lot of times we push through life, push through life, push through life, you know, asking God for something, and golly, he did it, let's keep going, let's ask him for the next thing, keep going. Well, um, God in the Old Testament told the Israelites, you know, every once in a while you need to stop and take a break and look back at what I've done, look back at my faithfulness. Right. And so true has given us the opportunity to do that. Instead of just pushing forward, pushing forward, more information, more encounters with God, more blessings, um, we're gonna, we get to stop and look back at what God has done. We're going to pull those five-foot banners out from your rooms, and they're going to look back at those and remember. Um, we're going to play a very spiritual game, kind of like Plinko, I think. Um, it's called Zonk. And it's going it. yeah, it, to, it's, it's a wild and crazy game that's going to be an awesome time for, to kind of recap, information-wise recap. And then the kids are going to have really cool times in large group to share, at a microphone, you know, what God's doing in their life. Won't that be cool, you know? Um, extended response station time, extended worship time. So that's maybe even costumes. In my mind, there are costumes. <laughs> um, so um, that's every 6th and 13th week that happens. We'll guide you through those. Um, it's, it's not hard. It's total, it's total fun. And, and this, so, this, is a, this, is a brilliant, this is a brilliant time for us because what's going to happen here is just purely storytelling. To let kids just sort of, and we're, we're doing, you know, more than likely we're going to model what that looks like. And there could be some Sundays where, you know, it's, it's no one's going to the mic. You know something? That, that's all good. That, that's, that's all good. But I think as we model, our kids will go and tell a story. What does that do for the faith community? That inspires us all, right? That's, that's the posture. I hope y'all are excited. I am just beyond excited um, for what it's going to look like. It is going to be different. It's going to be different. And I, you know, this is terrible. At a moment, it's low expectations, high satisfaction. Low expectations, high satisfaction. And so... You know, I try not to think it's going to be great, but I think it's going to be great. You know, I know it's not going to be beautiful the first week. I know it's not going to be clean. I know it's not going to be pretty. I know, you know, we're not going to be quiet for worship response stations, you know, the first week. I know that um, parents are going to come too early or they're going to come too late. I've done bless your kids 10 minutes ago. You know, so it's not going to be perfect, but, um, but it's a process. And I think that we are so blessed and so fortunate to be here at such a time as this. Right. You know what I'm saying? We could have come, you know, five years from now when everybody's already got it done. But we get to be in on the beginning, which I think is totally cool. All right, we have like eight minutes to break up into our east and west, like if you want to talk to your folks. And um, I don't have a ton to say to west, but okay, so anyway, ready, set, go. Um, okay. West people, let me just tell you this. Um, we've gone down to three groups. So it's ABC. Okay, this is this is 915. It's ABC instead of ABCD. It fits our space better. It fits this concept a little bit better. It's hard to share and get things going in a group of three or four kids. You know, that's difficult. It, it's nice to connect, but but there's something about numbers, you know, when you hear people and then you get going and you get going and you get going. Um, so there's something about that. Um, so we're going to make the groups a little bit bigger and, um, like I say, it fits our new space better. Those rooms, your breakout rooms, are big. Um, there's no doors. I should have a picture. Um, there's no doors. It's just kind of open. It's so cool. So beautiful. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, so it, it's kind of a wide open space. Um, we have decided, I'm sorry, you're going to sit in chairs. Some of the chairs are kind of little. Not terribly little, but a little bit littler than that. Half of them are little, half of them are big. Um, and what we have, we've been thinking through things, but you'll have, you'll have your room assignments when you get here. Four rooms are going to have to meet, four groups are going to have to meet out, you know, like fourth grade used to do, out in the big room. This is 9.15. Um, and, well, they won't have to be that way at 10.45, but at 9.15, we'll have four groups outside in the big room. 
It is our thought right now that instead of putting fourth graders out there, I think we're going to put the little ones out there. I think we're going to put first grade and one second grade group. For one thing, the fourth graders are very confident in their room, and so they're standing and they see their parent and they go, you know, whereas first graders are a little bit less likely to do that. They're going to stick close by. Um, they fit in that space a little bit better because they're little. So, um, fourth grade, third grade, and three and two of the second grade rooms will have a breakout room to begin with. Four of them will be outside. Now, in January, when the new space opens up, we should all be in a room and all be in a breakout room if we stick with three per grade. Um, I talked to you just for a minute about that in, the anticipate, that early time when, when the kids come and there's a different activity. And I had this bright idea, you can tell me if you hate it, um, that we could take turns manning that anticipate station. It's not always a station, because sometimes it's the whole room, you know. But I kind of thought, instead of pulling all my first grade leaders one week and all my second grade leaders, what if I did, um, like, all A, if you're 1A or 2A or 3A or 4A, you're on Anticipate this week. And then the next week, it's all my B people, and the next week, it's all my C people. And then that way, we kind of take turns, okay? So, like, for instance, week one, A people will man the Anticipate station. B people are going to man that the, you know, the clipboard, clipboard place, you know, put yours here, put yours here, put yours. And then C people will kind of work the room, you know, like the basketball bowls and the foosball or whatever it is, you know, I mean, just kind of be general over the room. And then the next week we'll switch it up. You know what I mean? Is that, I think I think that might work because I want it to be good in band, you know, and everybody have it because I think you're going to really get to know the kids a little bit better when you're on the anticipate station. So I'm excited about that. Okay, one other change we're making for 9:15 hour is that we're going to have a connection specialist, Lynn Higgins. Raise your hand. And Katie, she's 135. I think Katie Chanel this week's 24. They're going to act as our connection specialist. I came up with that name. Probably doesn't mean anything. It's not a very good title, but um, but she's going to what? Oh, you're in every week. Oh, yay! Okay, good. She's in every week. Um, what what we're going to do there is we're going to make that a visitor group. So when visitors come, and let me tell you my thinking behind this. When visitors come. Uh, many times it's a family with two kids, you know, a first grader and a third grader, and we bring them in, okay, you go over there and you go over here. And they're like, oh, no, I didn't want to go over there and hurt over here. You know, and so we're going to allow that family group to stay together. We chose the sweetest people. You see, some of y'all didn't get chosen. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, and Lynn is a, is a, you know, Sunday school teacher, and she, I think she's, she, and, and if any of you would like to switch to that, I think y'all are all sweet, but... Um, but it's just going to be a real sweet way for them to connect. Um, and Lynn, you know, she might decide that week to make phone calls to those people and say, you know, I'm so glad you're here, or whatever, to make a little bit more of a connection with those visitors. They'll only stay in that group for like a week or maybe two weeks. And if they, after they come twice, we'll know, hey, these people are in, and we'll, we'll funnel them into your groups. So hers is going to be kind of an in and out group, you know. Yeah. If a friend, absolutely, the friend goes with the, the friend will go with the girl. You know, if Kenner brings her friend, yeah, that friend goes in Kenner's group. But when a, it's when a family shows up with no connection, and we're going to keep y'all together as a family, and we're going to put all the visitors in one group. And there may be weeks when Lynn doesn't have a group, and on that week, she can go to Starbucks. <laughs> um, I think that's all I got. Do you have that questions? You said a quick one. So um, the whole an anticipate time, that's a choice they can go to that station or we're still going to have, you said, the food I'm encouraging that. I almost got rid of it. I know my boys. I, know. I and almost got rid of it, but I didn't. Okay. What, and, and a lot of times it's not a very long activity. A lot of times we get a two-minute thing, you know. And so we're going to encourage them to go do that and then move on. You know, do the anticipate and move on. Or go play and then do the anticipate and then come to the big group. 
something. We're going to encourage them to do it. A lot of times that is going to be more fun than foosball. You know, some of these games that they have for the anticipate time are really fun. Like if Mr. King is running a cool game in the big group, hello, basketball is now on the thing. I used to know if it was a choice thing, but it was still, like we're still going to kind of is a choice. We are not as you have to do the hard work, you know, quiz or whatever it is, you know. So no, it's, we're not, you know. It's kind of free, they can, they can choose. It is still free, but it's only free until 920. You see that? Like it's, we are getting into it. Really, really getting into it quickly. And we're going to run through these. Did you have something, Greg? Yeah, I'll be same thing for all of this. It is the it is going to be the same for every hour. I've put these times up here, but, but you can see that it's just 15 minutes. So um, that would be 10:35 to 10:50. You know, it, it, this is gonna, it's going to look the same in your hour. That same same storyteller that just taught at 9:15 is going to teach in your hour. It's going to look just the same on Saturday nights and both hours on Sunday. Saturday night also will look just like this. Yes. Yes. First Sunday is week one, three, five, people. Yes. And my second question is, is there anything we need to do to prepare each Sunday? I know you're going to send some material. Is there other things we should be doing other than doing that material? No. Except for pray. I'm going to pray for you, and you pray for me, and we're all going to pray for the kids. And it is going to be fantastic. If that's all we change, if that's the only thing we change, is if we just all commit to pray, it's going to be amazingly different. So can we commit to that together? Like, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray like crazy. I'm going to pray for you. You pray for me. We're all going to pray for the kids, and it's going to be different. I want something different. I did have another question. There is a parent connect piece that they get. Oh, okay. and I, I put it back there. That okay. home front they get that. Can we, can we that you get that. Um, you get that. You get they, You hand that home front weekly out at the end of the day. At the and that's end of the for the next lesson, right? Get them right. That's the for the next lesson. Parents get to be first. They get to. They are primary. They get to teach the lesson. If they want to teach the whole thing, and we'll just add to it, that would be awesome. So parents are going to get what they get isn't a review of what we just did. It's what's coming next week. So yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. Y'all are going to be great. It's going to be super, super great. I like it. For the 245 people, you really want us down here. Bye. I would say 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10.30. And we're going we're gonna to tweak this. Y'all, this ain't going to be pretty. And so y'all tell me in a nice way, because I don't do well with, uh, with criticism. But tell me, this is not working. I don't have long enough, you know. But I think that we, if, you know, I, I'm, I'm listening. And it's, you know, we're all learning. We're all doing it together. Game times are going to be very incorporate everybody. So I'm hoping everybody's going to. I'm not going to make them do that. But and it may be that we get rid of those football tapes if we find that if we find that if, you know that it's a distraction, then we'll get them out there. But if it can just be, if it can come alongside, then I think there's no reason that they can't stay. I've got it here. Three, um, Storytelling time is 15 minutes. About 15 minutes. Yeah. Because it didn't look like it. Yeah. And so you could, yeah, you could stretch it. And I'll give you a time each day. You know. Okay, I hope I've covered everything. Yeah, no. Too much. It's off. Yes, I probably wanted it off 10 minutes.